Ladies and gentlemen, get your goddamn hands off of me, nigga. You wild. <laughs> oh, so because this Black Panther, you want to come in hot like that. You that's wild. What you, that's what you have to do. <laughs> you, you just want to start off with. <laughs> you wild. Yeah. <laughs> and just like a nigga, that's why his internet went shifty and he fucking froze. Oh, <laughs> Man, you come straight out of a cone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Straight Out of Comic Book. I am your host, Will Farrow. And of course, I got the fellas with me. Prince Tedeuce. Did I say it right? Yep, Prince Tedeuce. Uh, <laughs> C. Toussaint. C. Toussaint is here. And of course, Dion Black Panther. And as well as me, your boy, Will Moore, in the building. If you haven't caught on to it, we are talking about... Black Panther, Wakanda, Forever, it is out. If you haven't seen it, we about to spoil the shit out of this movie. So you should go watch some of these other ones. Uh, yeah. You know, Wakanda, Forever, Always. Forever, yeah. So just letting y'all know, we about to spoil it. So if you ain't went seen it, and if you black ain't went seen it. <laughs> went seen. Went yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah. I, had, yeah. Black. I had to go real black. If you ain't went seen it yet. You ain't went seen it. You ain't with safety yet. Now here's the thing, bro. Dion, Will, and myself went to go see it Thursday, last Thursday, mm-hmm. and I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Today, like before the show, I watched uh, the Easter eggs and like you know what are they gonna be you know yeah. per- uh, potentially doing in the future, and I I cried a little bit because it made me miss Chadwick even more, bro. Yeah. And that's something that now I realize after you know two and a half years is not gonna go away this man yeah. impacted us he touched us and he was born to play the king of wakanda out of every role he's done you know 42 when he played uh the judge um i keep oh, doing this too uh, third good marshall third good marshall when he played james brown then playing T'Challa, which is a fictional character. He was born to play this fictional character Jackie Robinson. more than anything. Yes, Jackie Robinson. This fictional character was greater than anything because he represented a future and a grandiose hope for what we can become. Yeah. They were supposed to do a, a sequel to Third Good Marshal called Fourth Good Marshal. But you know that had to happen, man, you know. I'm out, bro. <laughs> after after how eloquent he just put that really, really, Dion. Dion is hot today, yeah, but you you a Black Panther for real tonight. That's, you you oh, coming man. in hot with it. You are a nigga cat. That's what you are this evening. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, why you playing though? They had them in real life. I'd get one. If I saw it in the pet store, yeah, we got the bigger cats in back. You want to check? Oh, it out. You, got, oh you got y'all re upped? Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh y'all got some fresh niggas in there. Okay. Some fresh on it. Okay. So here's the thing, bro. When I look at the movie, man, um, and we've talked about this. This is, of course, for us three. A lot of this is going to be us saying what we said in person on camera. But uh, Ryan Coogler, round of applause, bro. Round yes. of applause for Coogler. He did the impossible. He had so much working against him, yes, and that showed how brilliant this man is to have been able to even compose a story that will handle the real life passing of Chadwick Boseman, the character passing of T'Challa, and then how you're going to get Shuri into the Black Panther costume and make us want to see her as Black Panther. Yeah, and yeah. then... On top of that, you done killed Angela Bassett. What the man? Listen, and we man. and we and we definitely gonna get into that. We are gonna get into that. <laughs> yes, but uh, I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more, man. Shout out to Ryan Coogler. What I noticed was two things that he did that he showed Hollywood as well. One, you can get a complete curveball thrown at you, especially with the passing of this, and mm-hmm. to be able to bounce back and give us something so great like Wakanda Forever. Now, I don't know why Josh Whedon couldn't do that with Justice League, but for some reason, you know, when it's white, it didn't go right. So, you know, maybe you should bet on black moving forward. Secondly, another mm-hmm. thing he did was I love how uh, something me, Dion, and CT had brought up was 
this did not feel like a Marvel movie. And right. I think, and I think that's what Eternals tried to do, but didn't really capture it. He captured this so well. This did yeah. not feel like a Marvel movie. This felt like just one of those big budget films that you got to be able to do whatever you want to, and you yeah. told a story beautifully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know what I felt like that, bro? It felt like that because Ryan Coogler, I truly hope he gets an Academy Award for this film for screenplay. Because, Ooh. dude, for okay, first of all, Love and Thunder. I'm not gonna do that today. All <laughs> right, so for every other Marvel movie, <laughs> no, man. Oh, no. for every other Marvel movie we've seen this year, with the exception of Spider Man No Way Home, it's been lacking, you know what I mean? And for this man to do everything that he did with everything working against him to create a story that gave us laugh, action, story being progressed, tears, uh, and joy is the mark of an incredible writer, not just a comic book writer. This guy is brilliant, man, and he needs his flowers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, they, they, they got the death before they started writing the script. So it's different. No, that's not the truth. He wrote the script, and he had it finished, and he was giving it to Chadwick to read. Mm -hmm. And then before he got back, when he before he spoke to Chadwick again, like a couple weeks later, Chadwick passed away. So before the script he shot the film, I would say. Before he, he said, shot the film. Before uh, no, so okay, you're right, you're right. Sure. I didn't know this. Before yeah. they shot the film. So it wasn't like they were midway through like Justice League. No. He had to no. figure things out. They, yeah, so was, he wrote it, had to rewrite a whole different thing yeah. because right. of this. Yeah. And then also keep in mind, though, you also have you're in a universe. So mm -hmm. you also now have to keep all of that stuff in mind, yeah. too. Like Justice League. Like, Actually, honestly, Black Panther can work on his own. Like, yeah, and it, show, it showed that. It showed it really, that. It really don't fit in the universe like that. It's not like I, we got to watch Black Panther to be in the Marvel. Because like we, because none of those characters from the Marvel universe is actually translated over except uh, Agent Ross. That's the only person... Is from a different part of the universe. Everybody else in there and is just its own ent entity. Yeah, I'm being honest. Dreyfus as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say because oh, they did they they did enough that like if it was just this these two movies solo, Black Panther and Wakanda Forever, mm -hmm. like it, it'll be okay. But they did enough for like, hey, but if you really want to tie in some stuff, we can still tie in, and it fits perfectly yeah. without messing up the continuity of anything. Right? It's kind of yeah. like how like static was like when static before like dc started really adapting them static was doing enough where they yeah. was like creating where it's like look we could just be static but if y'all want to include us in what y'all doing y'all can and this is how we can make it tie in who was moving like he 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 on sony like he has spotted me why y'all take this nigga out we still good yo <laughs> yo because they did like like because for me watching it i was like you basically made it to where we don't need to see Wakanda again. Like, that's how good you made this one. You completely shitted on everybody in the first 10 minutes. Like, you toppled the world government Man. in 10 minutes hey. of this movie. Like, do y'all realize, like, didn't none of them come mess with them after that? It was no. just like Louis Dreyfus and uh, <laughs> Agent Ross, and they were just like, yo, we're going to go attack them. Me like, I don't do that. That was a big joker. They pulled out their big joker and it was like, nah, fam, that ain't enough. Like, y'all can do that, but that ain't enough. Like, they literally <laughs> showed, like, yo, we not going over there and messing with them. Like, they, like, it's good. Why are you going we over there messing with them people, huh? <laughs> I told you about that. Get your ass back in Get the Get your ass boy. back in the car. No, no. <laughs> but the way that they opened it, like, one, they hit you with emotion straight out the gate. Because... I was thinking, I'm like, all right, how I, that was the big question. Are they how are they gonna show the death? Like what is gonna happen in that moment? And for them to start with like silence and just have that moment of Shuri talking to boss and then going into it and just seeing the panic and then going straight into like the way that they did the Marvel logo. And it was like, I was like, yo, like already let's address that real quick though. When you say he talked, she she spoke to uh, to Bast to Bast. Uh, that changes things after Love and Thunder because now we have seen Bast is a real yeah. person, it's a real guy, yep. and this is one of the things that in the uh, in the Easter egg joint that you'll see, they show a quick screenshot of Bast in Love and Thunder. Yeah, she's a purple 
a god and mm-hmm. she is you know interesting outfit that they gave her but she yep. is a real god yep. so knowing that this is a real god and that she didn't spare him is like er this i wouldn't mind seeing bast fight a black panther but also let's keep in mind though too with that that also may have been her avatar because remember, Moon Knight showed us that some oh, yeah. of these gods take avatars You're right. to go as a representation mm-hmm. for them. But so can, I that, apply, can I applaud Kugler for using what happened in the first movie by uh, Killmonger killing off the flowers? Oh yeah. To give him to, so she he she you he used that yep. to heal T'Challa. So she couldn't rec- she couldn't recreate the healing yeah. powers for him. So it was brilliant. Yeah. Because she's like, I don't even know how to recreate this. So she's like. It's, I'm gonna get just as good as I can, close as I can get to it, to to heal him. But like he's already gone. Yeah. But oh, yeah. Yeah. to what to, to what an situation? actual disease that he actually had. Don't even talk about what he right. what it really is. It was mm-hmm. a, it was a my, um, it was a oh, can't do it was, it was a tribute to like what he actually has. But we're not gonna say specifically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was gonna say to what CT said. It really also it gave. Shuri's drive. Remember, throughout the whole thing, she was like, she didn't really, even, she didn't believe in this stuff. At that mm-hmm. point, she lost faith in the the whole Wakanda lore, Boston, all of that. So, like, it was really like to have that moment be the moment that, now, yeah, I'm I'm focused on science and technology because I know that I can count on that because I can't yeah. count on the gods. Like, no. it was really dope how they how they tied that all together, dude. Yeah. And for her to recreate the heart shaped orb. Herb, she had to have gone and come in contact with Namor because mm-hmm. had she not, she would have still been at the twenty six percent. And had he not yeah. given her the thing, first of all, you you a rude ass chick for a motherfucker <laughs> to give you a bracelet from his mother from five hundred <laughs> years ago. Take it off and create some other shit with it. Like you wild. <laughs> so. So that's what that's what I want to get into. Uh, so like, of course, like, but just just to even share back before we do how uh, Deuce said and even like uh, Dion said, the music, the no music at the beginning mm. really set the tone. Like, mm-hmm. like having like not even any background music, you could just feel the like, like, yo, we know this dude is gone, but it's like, mm-hmm. yo, T'Challa sick? Yeah. What? Yeah. And like, we already knew that, but it's like, what? Yeah, and so to but then like how Dion said to now see them use the technology to go let me see how can we can recreate this. Mm-hmm. It's like yo, I like seeing that because then that now gives me more mind to can y'all are they gonna try to remake the super uh soldier serum? Like there's other things of like mm. stuff that we've seen that get mm-hmm. formulated that now we know hey it's possible and what kind of got that technology. But, but if you start right there, this is why. I don't th- well first of all they're always going to try and create a new super soldier serum. That's yeah. a fact. But I don't think it would involve the new heart shape herb because nobody knows about that outside Wakanda. Even if you look at the yeah. first Black Panther, nobody living I mean nobody who lived to I mean nobody who was involved in that story yeah. that lived knows anything about it. The other people yeah. who were outsiders died. So Wakanda was like, yeah, we got vibranium we got vibranium, but they ain't told nobody nothing about them herbs. Yeah. yeah, true. That's true. That's like Agent Ross, he knows about it. No, yeah. Agent Ross doesn't no, know about he, it. He, said they, he only knows about vibranium. That's what, yeah. oh, so like the world, they, that, cause remember, that's what the world is trying to get. They think vibranium is the big thing. Like, oh, we got to yeah. get vibranium. And, and though imagine it's powerful, if he knew about the fucking yeah. herb. If he knew yeah. about the herb, the government would know about the herb and they would want vibranium mm-hmm. and the herb because yeah, now yeah. they can have a whole army of Black Panthers. But mm-hmm. since they only, because now think about the first movie. Uh, Ross wasn't brought over to Wakanda during um, the first heart shape herb, and then by the time that T'Challa got the next heart shape herb, he wasn't a uh, member. Angela Bassett and Shuri and Okoye went over there to talk to Mbaku. Yep. So General Ross wasn't with them. Yep. So when she hit him with the herb, and even if he was, let's say for example, playing devil's advocate, let's say he was with them when they went over um, to Mbaku. The mother, Angela Bassett, gives him this final heart-shaped herb because everything else is destroyed. So now when we go to the the new movie, Shuri recreated this and nobody knows she recreated it. So that's even more reason that nobody would know. Yeah, but now though, what does give me reason to think that they might find that out is because now that there's a connection I'm seeing because of Agent Ross now being in Wakanda, and um, uh, Dreyfus's character trying to find him, 
this is what makes me think it's going to be a plot of the Thunderbolts and them actually going to Wakanda. Well, I don't think they're going to Wakanda. I think that they're going to go because remember she was she had she had the uh, Okoye beads tapped, right? So she heard every conversation, and so she now knows about um uh oh, name no, no more in them and i believe yeah. that that's what's going to end up happening it, i feel like she because she's now going to try to get this other civilization it's like look we fell with wakanda but this one we probably can get i feel like that's what they're they, they're going to no but that but that that's the thing too that's what makes me think out of the two states of where you would want to go is wakanda because of the fact you don't know because again you know where wakanda technically is at nobody knows where name city is except shuri True. That's it. And so it's like the easiest way for them. To get, and then too, remember, they got the Winter Soldier. He's been there before. So who's for, for, who's oh, for them for to not blackmail him to force them to find a way in there to be able to retrieve that stuff? And then on top of that, finding out about the heart-shaped bird. Yeah. Oh, they showing that you can't trust the whites, boy. That's what they Man, hey. Remember, <laughs> that, that arm is Wakanda's, though. Remember how they took it off quickly? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they disarmed them so fast. Yep. <laughs> And, and then again, too, like who's to say whatever they did to that dude brain, something's still in there. Something well, is still like there's some word list of words that can be said to him that's going to make him stop. Yeah, because she I mean, you you already know, like, I mean, most most of the people who's been brainwashed has been tricked before. So that's all it's going to take. Her, her character is just going to trick them again. She she tricked Yelena already. She tricked, you know, like I said, Winter Soldier already been tricked. Like all she's going to do is just manipulate them again. To to get it now she now she has a whole team. I mean Yelena's father is not the brightest tool in the shed, so it's like like she has a team full of people that she his, can manipulate. His is pride, so that's how she can yeah. manipulate him. Ghost isn't finding the cure for her, so that's how yeah. she can manipulate her. Yelena is the same thing, being sold back to the Red Ribbon Army and having to mm-hmm. go back there. Same thing with Winter Soldier, and then if uh, Did Barry, you say Red Ribbon Army he definitely said Red Ribbon. Did Army. I say Red Ribbon? <laughs> yes, I was like that's Dragon Ball Z, bro. Uh, <laughs> that's Red Dragon Ribbon Ball. Army, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm mean, back to the red room, <laughs> and then going back to the red room. But I, I can see head go up. I'm like, he about to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see them doing that. But I do have to ask though, because um, I, I want to jump back into Namor. So we got to be introduced to the first mutant. But I got, I got to be honest, and man, y'all just let me know. I feel like Namor what Namor in enough in this nope. movie. He was nice. Wait, wait, hold on. Let, he, y'all, y'all seem he, like me on the same page. So let me let me speak my piece on this before. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I, I do believe that I believe that he was more Namor than I thought he was going to be. Because so in the comics, I like I always thought Namor, I was like, one, I I was not a big fan of Aquaman in general. So I thought Namor was even weaker than Aquaman, right? The wing feet I didn't like, but the way that they used it, allowing him to just like zip through and zip through, I yeah. was like. Yo, they actually made him pretty beasty. He was beast more than I fuck. thought he was going to yeah. be, and so I was like, to me, he was more Namor than I thought because I thought it was like, like the way that the way that Family Guy clowns on Aquaman. That's how I always viewed Namor. So it was like, I, I, my, my expectation was low for Namor, and then seeing just like, even the way he was threatening people, like I'm just like, bro, like the one thing that Black Panther and Wakanda Forever both did is that. They really had good villains because I, at some point, I literally looked to the person that was sitting next to me like, "Hey, they, this nigga gotta go, man! Yeah, like, yeah. yo, he's doing too much. This nigga gotta go." And so, like, I was, I was thoroughly surprised and happy with how they portrayed Namor in this. I didn't, I didn't like how um, Nakia got to the city so quickly unscathed. Hey, oh no, 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 I gotta clear it up because no, that's, no, no, that's a. No, no, that's something me and Dion was talking about at the theater. So, no, I, I, I figured that out, Dion. So, she didn't get to the city. She got to that lot, that holding area where Riri was. That's not near the city because, remember, yeah. Namor took her down and then they hit that tube, that current. Oh, that yeah, they had to hit the current. Yeah. So, she didn't make it there. She made it to their first location when they went underwater where the flower okay. was originally at. I thought that yeah, same we, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yo, this kid's not that good of a spy. 
to sneak past all these people. Well, that's what I said. I fuck with it because I was like in the in the in Black Panther, they made her seem like she was super beastly spy, but they didn't really show us any spy. So I was like, all right, they finally showed us why she's so beastly. Like she ain't call for no backup. She just said, all right, how you want me to do this? I got this. Let's go. What suit was that? Because they was talking about this suit that I want to put into you, Shuri. Will crush your skull if you don't, you know what I'm saying? If you don't use it normally. But what type of, of normal suit she had on that when the water pressure gets close, it, it should have crushed her, right? Was that made of vibranium? Yeah, but again, yeah, but I don't think they went that low underwater, though. That's the thing. I don't think they went that far under from where they were. So that's that, like that, that's the only thing I can think of. It, it's just they weren't that far under uh, ground. And but, shout out to her being such a good spy to have even gotten there. Yeah. Yeah, to find that, yeah, because what nobody trying to talk to her. Hey, that lady was like, "Get the fuck out of here! I ain't talking to you." Mm-hmm. But, but even to, but even to that thing, that's why I was just like, Namor had a Thanos like attitude, but yeah. his plan and his attitude didn't match. Like Thanos, Thanos seemed calculating because of what he was doing. It's like, yo, I'm doing this to you know help us survive. Like yeah. he had a reason, like. Namor stuff was personal. Like he didn't yeah. like surface dwellers, but it That's was like right. I didn't see that <laughs> hatred in your eyes. Like I saw, like yo, like you, you seem like a cool dude. Like at one point, like I didn't say it to them, but I was like, yo, I, I, I'd light up with Namor. But like you trying to smoke? <laughs> like that's what Namor gave me, and I never saw like the wrath of Cuckoo Khan come out. Cool. And it, oh. yeah, I was like, I didn't that's see that. Cool. I was just like, you, yeah, <laughs> cool guy. Gone. The feathers have been gone. <laughs> I didn't see that come out of him, but it was just like you see it with his fighting style. But it was just like, even like with Shuri, I'm like, bro, as old as you are, you should have fucked Shuri up. Like, Honestly, Shuri shouldn't have had this on you. Shuri is is as smart as uh, Riri. So when they had said, whoever who made this machine, I need me to get her and, and kill her. Then it was like, uh, hey, she's just a little girl. We'll take her. It was like, I have another plan. Now <laughs> it was like I want to take and kill all the. What was his plan? I want to kill all. I'm the, gonna kill all the surface dwellers except y'all. Like so, they can't. I'm gonna drown everybody so they can't come find our yeah. city. But we gonna keep y'all around. So you down? Like nah, I'm not. I, I didn't. I'm, I didn't. I don't like. I didn't like the switch of plan. And he was like, uh, I like. I like how y'all rock. But here, I need y'all to be an ally. So we can kill all the surface dwellers. What? So I didn't believe in the allyship. I still thought I'm. I'm like he only saying that so he can get rid of them. He's still gonna kill the Wakanda. Like in my eyes, he was like he was like Marlo from The Wire. Like when he, as soon as he came out, I was like, bro, you look sketchy as shit. Like even the way, like bro, he, as soon as he got to Wakanda, he was looking around like, hey, like you know how like yeah. the mafia. Like how they I how they people. people like hey I man this, this is a nice this is a nice place man it would be, a, those villains, be man. horrible if you got fucked up like to me that's the vibes I got from him right off the no. bat but it, it did but it didn't come out though that's the thing so it's like even like when he drowned the city you drowned the city because they shot one of your one person yeah. in your city and you went drown the whole city like yeah. where did oh. that that where did that maniac come out at and they didn't show it, it was just like. Very no, okay. His his uh his like his uh his little goon was like, why'd you let that girl in here? Because you know if she gonna she's gonna call somebody mm-hmm. down. He's like, no, she's good, she's good. And then sure enough, it happened. But I, I do want to talk about that scene, uh, Deuce, when he when she's like, who are you? And he was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It was a city like this. You just ignore the the threat. They got guns with him. Like, because he know he beastie. He like. Here's the do it to ask again. He said, "Wow." Anyway, because <laughs> it's, it's so arrogant. Because That's like, not even just the arrogance. The arrogance comes one at the fact that he had his soldiers drop that weapon while he was talking to the queen, and they didn't even notice. Do you understand? Yeah. The second thing is how brilliant it was that everybody in Wakanda is fortified except the water it's like that let us know the flaw in their entire plan which yep. is getting there from underwater which no other nobody else had tried right yeah 
Yeah, and then too, like, because we already knew, like, the Border Tribe wasn't really fully put together no more because uh, what's his face is in jail. Yeah, and then that was too. It was like, didn't nobody bring up the River Tribe? I was like, but she kept talking, and it's like, wait a minute, you shouldn't have no ideas, but how you go <laughs> while you wasn't on alert and, yeah. and let this little fish dude come in? That's what we need to talk about. But it was like that. I I just wish I would have saw him be more of an asshole. Like it was like like you see him with the physical side, but it was just like his personality didn't do, do that the entire time. Like when the Baku came to strike him, and he was just like, "Yeah, man, so you know we gonna go here. I don't make sure y'all attack here." <laughs> uh, so like I was saying, you gonna go go do this way? I'm like, you know why is that not consistently there? It kept looking like when the, like even at the end when the chick was like. I've been waiting all this time to fight with you. Yeah. Why'd you stop? And my first thought was, I was like, y'all need to overthrow this dude. Like, he ain't he ain't fit to leave. Like, I see what y'all want, and this is not your guy. This well, is the guy to sit up here and paint. But that's what's going to end up being like, because I, I forgot. I forgot which one of them. There, there's somebody in his tribe that does challenge him, and, and it's, it's that story. The same thing with Aquaman, where they say, yeah. like, you are not fit to run because you have flaws. Like, his flaw is going to be he has this this vision of of them and Wakanda Wakanda being a unit, right? And so they're going to look at that as a flaw, and that's how he's going to end up getting challenged. That's going to be his inner struggle. Like you Is have there a to Namor story that. coming out soon. Hmm. It should be, oh, a, Namor. It should be not, a Namor story because I, I would like I would love to tap more into them. Yeah, I think I'm a, good. Like they gave me a dual origin story movie. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You know which what I mean? Was, which was cool because they he the way he formatted it was dope. Because it was like that could have been anybody, like mm -hmm. anybody going up against Wakanda. Like I'd have been okay with the U.S. government being in place where Namor was in, and that happening, or like the world going against them, or like that, or a different like space, like the people like the Shatari. If they want to introduce the uh, Shatari with vibranium again for this story, like it would, it was a perfect format to include that. And so that's like how you said, CT. Anybody could have made a great origin story for that slot, so I, but I'm glad. Two great did. origin stories, because you know we got we got Riri too. Oh shit, she got an Iron Man suit. Hey, that's that's that was the oh, greatest that's, moment. That's the best line. Had <laughs> the whole movie. Had the whole movie. That was the best line. And they never showed that dude. They just used no. his voice. Oh <laughs> man, she got an Iron Man suit. <laughs> because that, because that, oh. if after Iron Man is dead, that would be the natural reaction when you see another one. Like, oh shit. Oh shit. She got an Iron Man suit. My <laughs> nigga came in hot like hot. Oh, oh shit! She got an Iron Man suit. <laughs> Bro, that was the here's the thing. I loved first. We know Riri was hella shoehorned in that movie, but I loved seeing the actress that they got to play Riri. Mm -hmm. Um, I think. Because Iron Man is my number one favorite character in Marvel besides the Human Torch. And I feel like... Before 2008? Well, yeah, I've always been a fan of the Human Torch. The Human yeah. Torch, as a character, bro, he's he's no, up there. Iron Man. I know, but I'm you said... I'm saying Iron Man, Human Torch. I, I didn't know... At all Marvel, before 2008, he was your favorite character. Iron Man? Yeah, I used to watch the Iron Man TV show in the 90s. Wow. Like, yeah, all, because like Iron all the X-Men. Well, I was never a real uh, X Men guy. Like okay. X Men to me, X Men, mind you, I like X Men now because I'm an adult and it's dark. But as a child, bro, I didn't really like dark stuff. Like even though I was watching Batman and I was watching a lot of DC stuff, the stuff that they showed on television was catered for children. So even the only thing that got through was the animated series of Batman because that was extremely dark. And I don't know how they found a way to. It's kind of like going to see a Disney movie now with kids. It's like they make it for adults more than kids. But as a kid, you're like, yeah, this is for us. Mm -hmm. So they kind of did that same thing with the animated series. Like watching it as a kid is completely different than watching it as an adult. Because you're like, this is way too dark to have been on kids TV. So with um, with Iron Man back in the 90s, I loved the story. I loved how he had a whole squad. Hawkeye was one of his sidekicks. Uh, Rhodey, which is War Machine could have been his own dude and is already being a big kid i was like oh man i'm gonna be like war machine right mm -hmm. so the iron man cartoon was so fire so by the time that i heard that they were doing the movie i was like please don't let them mess this up you know what i mean yeah. but human torch yeah. god bless chris evans because yeah, he's fire 
as Human Torch. He's yeah. the only reason that movie did uh, a sequel. And here we are now looking at Namor and Black Panther and Riri Williams. I have such a love for Iron Man. I wanted to see her do the character a little differently. Like I, I get the, it's easy to do the quips and the puns and mm -hmm. cuss and all of that. But I would have loved to have seen something that made me fall in love with her. And I think that'll happen in her series, but it didn't give me, an, uh, I'm not super invested in her character from watching her in the movie. I I think what may, what may help will be the connection to Tony. I think the thing is right now, it's kind of like a, this is a person that's built it outside of that. So it's kind yeah. of like an outsider making this thing. So it's just like, oh, a fan made a real life Iron Man suit and now has been called to be able to do this stuff and really go do it. Because like in the comic books, she's mentored by Tony. And then even to the point to where he makes himself like an AI of himself yeah. to where she, mm -hmm. he assists her. So right. maybe even too, like she's able to track down like, the walk into some kind, you know, like path of Tony through like going to MIT, mm -hmm. kind of trying to mm -hmm. figure out how, because again, now she got to start with a Mach 3 now. So now mm -hmm. she's, she's seen it as a real suit. So like, what's her next one? So I think being able to follow within his path, kind of learn about mm -hmm. him a little bit and what made him Iron Man and what will make you it, Ironheart. Is it wise or a waste of character if they bring him back as, a, as an AI? It's well. Here's the thing. We already know Kevin Feige said we we can't keep relying on the Iron Man trope. Yeah, he said that, and that he broke my just, heart. He's just a voice, like he's just like a that's still really too much. That's I'd, be too I'd much rather because, yeah, I'd rather Jarvis. I'd rather yeah. get Jarvis. Well, and we can't do Jarvis anymore because that is literally Vision. Yeah. So it's Friday. If oh, anybody, yeah. Friday, yeah, yeah, Friday would yeah. have to be. So yeah. here's what I think that this movie did though to to what CT was saying because the way that they kind of position Riri, uh, Riri Williams is that like. She was like, she really wasn't taking even her tech like in a serious matter. She was doing it for money. Like she had this stuff that she was doing that she and they, they hinted at her story a little bit, but like she was selling stuff on on, on campus. Like it was just, it was just, I, I'm just smart. I can do this. Let me make a quick buck, right? I think seeing what happened in this movie and the seriousness of it, I think going away from it, she realizes like I just can't be creating tech out here, and that's what's going to ground her and get her to more like comic book accurate, where she has a purpose. She's not she's now using her technology for a better purpose, for good, not just for a quick buck here and there. And I think that that's what's going to build her character and and get you to more love her about it. At least that's yeah. what I hope. Well, also too, like how you said that, like her going back. So like her mm -hmm. having a series now, I think too that'll make us attach to her a little bit more because now. You have to go back and people know what happened. Like people like around you don't know, but these eyes that you were scared of yeah. know what you can do. And it's like, what else? Now she also has to deal with that professor. And it's like, who is this professor that's selling your ideas to the government? And it's oh, like, yeah. how is, how's he connected? And they didn't put like, a face on him, did they? No, they didn't put a face. I don't even think they did a name uh, for okay. him and stuff like that. So who is this person that's selling her ideas and getting paid off of them? That was one of the things. It's like, I don't know how they're going to sprinkle. First of all, God bless Ryan Coogler. I don't know how they're going to do X-Men, but this is the second mention of a mutant. Mm -hmm. Different wise, because Ms. Marvel, all right, cool, she's a mutant. But Namor, for him to have been around 500 years, and for him, peep this, to have been <clears throat> hidden from the service world. For him... <laughs> His biggest thing was like, hey, let me tell you something. If you tell anybody about me, I kill you. I kill everybody around here. Don't tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? That made me laugh because I'm like, he cares more about his uh his his secret identity and the secretness of his people yep. than anything else. He doesn't care if you tell them uh somebody killed him, but don't you tell them that I killed him because you've been trying to be secret, which also goes back to um Thanos in a sense because Thanos is thinking about everybody in the world I almost want to go back and hear his speech on how he wanted to get half of the earth's population so if he's thinking about the earth's population in his mind maybe it's only known population compared oh. to you know the unknown which is Namor and if Namor is unknown that makes you think why did the rest of the mutants not like how how have they been hidden because now yeah. you're allowing me to think yeah. they've been here the whole time. So 
uh, Namor, he did that with Namor. And then you look at the mutant category in general, and it's like, oh, yeah. Namor is a mutant who has this ability to basically have the entire water world. So this is what he's serious about. So when you see Wakanda and you see Ironheart, uh, it makes you think of the Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom, because didn't Doom go to MIT? Yeah, that's that's what that's what I was gonna say. Her professor probably. I, that's what I was hoping. My my one biggest critique about this is that I I came in expecting that we was gonna get a Doom tease, and I was like, I I figured her professor was going to be. When they said it, I said, Oh, at the end, watch the professor end up being Doom. But then they didn't give us no second credit thing. Or, I was like. Or another twist, it could be Reed Richards selling her information though. Yeah, that's that's the that's the only part. But but, it, but but again, too, this could be at the point where him and Doom are still working, and Doom is the one selling it because remember how, how that hierarchy they had. So remember, Doom was over them and working for them, and so he uh, might be the one selling them, and he's the one that's looking and seeing this great tape. But I think Ironheart might be the one that's going to introduce us to something fantastic for it. I don't think it's going to be Doom. I think it might either be Reed Richards or Sue Storm. I think mm. we might get to see one of them first, but I feel like Ironheart and like how, how CT said, Ryan Kluger's set up was now that bridge of us getting ready for the Fantastic Four. You know what, CT <laughs> said something that made me think about it too. With Thanos, with his uh, speech, like the whole reason why he was doing, he was saying that we're running out of resources, right? Now, Namor and his people, they're underwater. They're not using the, the resources that everybody else is using, right? So, I, like you said, now I'm thinking about exactly what CT said because I'm like, okay, how does that play? If this civilization is not using the resources that is being depleted, then it's like, dude, like, then they're not really adding to the problem on why Thanos want to snap away the world because they have this, like you said, they have unlimited underwater resources that nobody's touching but them. So it's like that, yeah, that is like, I, I want to go back and, and listen to that speech well, too now. Well, because it also too, like what, what made me kind of understand that more was was consciousness. And what let me know too was when you go back to what if the difference between Thanos having uh the uh the gauntlet and Ultron having the gauntlet was, was he isn't locked in. So his 10 <laughs> is he's not only using 10% of his brain, so he was uh, able to unlock every type of equation and possibility mm -hmm. and get to the watcher. Thanos can't do that. So Thanos' logic is every organism that is taken from this universe, we need to be able to cut it in half so we can wow. keep it here. Because one of the biggest things Ryan did miss, well, not, not, I'm not going to say miss, but didn't really mention, like how you, but how you said, Deuce, they're using materials that's not taken from us, that sun. What did he use to make a sun underwater for his oh, yeah. people to use? Wow. Yeah. And what is that made of? And it's like, yo, they really didn't dive into that. And I'm like, that's going to have some kind of major implication in the MCU. You know what I find funny is uh, how they became the water people. Yeah. Somebody was like, I'm telling you, man, this this right here can heal us. This can save us. We're all sick. We're gonna, and then I want to see the post-production of them like, yeah, I fucked up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want a professional like an I, office? I, uh, <laughs> Dude, so everybody, everybody, I'm the water now. I fucked up. My bad. My bad. I didn't my carry bad. The one. My bad. I, I didn't carry the one. <laughs> my fault, y'all. But like, we got gills now, Takan. We got gills. <laughs> hey, did, am I the only one who, at that part of the movie, thought about Mortal Kombat? And that uh the blue guy in Mortal Kombat 11. Do y'all play Mortal Kombat? Yeah, so yes, was like when I saw that character, I was like, oh my god, he looks exactly like him. And the, the yeah, Talokan, right? Khan, I was like, yo, yeah. but we yes. know different origin stories, but that was it. That was that was that yeah, thought. yeah. I definitely well, thought the, that the, the, the most genius, beautiful, perfect scene of the movie when uh Okoye came home to try to talk to the queen, and they all the whole castle was sitting there watching like this. Yo. No, no need, no need. Uh, you can relinquish your, your power of, of, of the Adorji uh, tribe. And she, and she was just like, why? My entire family! Yo, <laughs> I was not ready for that. That that was that speech was for. Right. I was like, oh. I thought she was talking oh. to the world. I didn't know she was talking to her. I was like, hey, hey, hey. And then she, she got petty. Last year, well, when Killmonger took hey, the throne, she, you she the <laughs> Yo, but she she kept digging in too, cause she was like, "Yo, I can go get her back." No, 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 no. 
You could go to jail and go still visit your husband. I don't know where my daughter is. My whole family gone. Get the fuck out. But now this would make this would make me ask questions too, though. And I was just like, I couldn't wait to get on here. Cause you know, now I'd be thinking, one, does Wakanda have an unemployment program? Like, Hilarious. And then two, now I gotta know, you know, like in Tupac's case, does Wakanda got a ghetto? That's Man, that's a great question. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. They showed us the ghetto uh, at, was it Black Panther 1? Probably no one in Africa. Well, yeah, the- right when they went before the forces, <laughs> that's where they showed it. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, when they, when they, when they, uh, when they showed uh, Chad was talking to, um, when they showed uh, T'Challa talking to what's the name? Uh, even before that, they showed us Wakanda's ghetto when they showed us Avengers 2, Age of Ultron. Because remember, Claw oh, yeah. was in Avengers 2. And they were like, yo, we in Wakanda. And they start showing the shipyard and all of that oh, stuff. Yeah, right. Oh, that's yeah, the yeah, yeah, part. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if, you got, if you got, like, banned from Wakanda, I'll be hating my ass off. Oh, I'd be mad. So, Ooh, y'all know it's a mad. bunch of you'll be so, killed. So, so that's, that's why Two yeah. Wonder was mad. He yeah. was like, Yo, you got me here in Compton. <laughs> I was in Wakanda, dog. Like, <laughs> like, listen, say, he wasn't in Wakanda. His no, no, father was, was right. His father like, told him everything, yeah, but the, the king didn't even tell the his people that he had a living nephew. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was but the crazy part. But that's the crappy part too. Just like how you said, why everybody become kill monger. Think about you growing up in that situation, not only knowing about this, but you know it's true. There is yeah. a city where there's technological advances where it's like, yo, we are free, and they left me here. Yeah. And won't even come get me. And won't even come. Yeah, yo, I'm killing everybody. <laughs> like, I'm killing like, I everybody. Get it. Like, 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 my, my pops did something, but I'm older now. Like, why do I got to keep on paying for this? Come get me. Like, <laughs> but also, like, there's no way for him to have come talk to them true. without the way he did what he did. Now, he went yeah. the long route, joined the military, <laughs> became him. Yeah. <laughs> became an assassin yeah. <laughs> and then killed their biggest enemy and brought them to him because without that how would he have been able to do it even though i think he might have been i don't know how they do the tattoo thing because they say you get that tattoo if you're born in wakanda but at the same time he wasn't born in wakanda so how did they do the tattoo yeah. well we well technically we don't know that because he said didn't and I could be wrong off of this. Didn't he say I needed to take you back there when he when he was speaking right. to him? So You're I right. think he may have been born there and then he was sent there and then he went back. But here's the thing: this is where it doesn't add up. This is where the holes come in because if he yeah. was born in Wakanda and you know raised in America, if he was born in Wakanda, that means the king, the queen, which is Angela Bassett, would have known about him. Bars. You know what I mean? So when he yeah. came back and was like, hey, auntie, and all of that shit, she wouldn't have denied him because she would have known about his existence. So the whole yeah. is that tattoo. So it's like, if he was born here, okay, we're explain this. But if he wasn't, then explain the tattoo. You know what I mean? Well, what yeah. if the king, we don't know if the, the king could have been lying to Ramonda. Like, remember, he knew everything. Remember, because he was the one that had the spy there and everything. So, like, we don't know what the king was actually telling the queen. He might have told her, like, yeah, you know, yeah, right. I, yeah, he was born, but, like, we, you know, we got rid of them. Whatever. Like, they, she probably thought, like, that bloodline was done. So to see him pop up, that's probably why she was like, oh, shit. Like, wait a minute. What the fuck is going on? And he didn't even give her time to actually talk it out. He was just like, look, look, look this is what we need to do. She's like, wait, nigga, you just told me I'm your auntie. Like, nigga, give me some time. Let's talk about this first. Like, he was yeah. on bullshit ASAP. So it was like, it wasn't really even no talking or anything like that, even to hash it out. Just be like, damn, you know what? Kane was lying to me. I didn't even know, but let's, let's, you know, let's, let's bring you back in the fold. Like, they didn't even have that moment because of yeah. the, the shit. That's the lip tattoos. I'm almost certain it's a nigga right now who got a uh, Wakanda lip tattoo. I'm like, of course. Right I'm oh yeah, black black light cut it on and that thing make the yeah. little symbol. Oh yeah, you already know. I'm but definitely positive. That's why I want to talk about though the greatest villain out of both of these two films. Like Killmonger was great, Namor was great, but the biggest villain was life. Life was fucking them up yeah, man. horribly. Man, <laughs> like, like yo, first we got that death, and then like we're gonna go ahead and get into it. Like Angela Bassett came in with this like incredible, 
perform and showing like like really truly showing a woman who had the entire weight of a kingdom and a family on her shoulders and how she's just trying to navigate through all that and um and had the arms to show like she'd been lifting that where are we go when i when i saw them arms i said oh she's definitely about to wear the suit them arms that's what i thought too I, thought, bro. I was yeah. like yo i thought she got she <laughs> did, we've had to see like a pat like a little thing of her using the suit and i was something. with it i was, I was with, it. with it i with was it. with it but it didn't happen instead what they gave us is face down in the pool of water but just, you know what man. it makes sense for the story for her to have uh for her to have died one even though i hated it it made sense for her to have not become the black panther but she wanted to when she was asking shuri how close are we to having yeah. found uh a substitute for the the herb because she was definitely going to don it as the queen of wakanda yes, but was. since shuri hadn't found a solution it's like by the time namor came she couldn't defend herself yeah he saved the girl and died and it's like oh and then the killmonger scene I don't care what you say. The back of that chair looked like her mother's hat, and that's why we thought yeah. it, was yes, it, did. it was a great misdirect, that's bro. Yeah. yeah, you know what? Yeah. Did, did any of y'all pick up on this? And I thought this was done perfectly. Like, so Queen Ramonda, she had that speech when she was like, "I lost everything," right? And then uh, if, if we didn't get that end credit, well, I was like, "Dog, her biggest fear became Shuri's reality. Her reality in the movie was she lost." Her brother, her mom, she lost her whole family. She Husband. had no family. And I was like, that was Queen Ramonda. That was her biggest thing that, that she was that she was uh pained by and everything. And I was like, that was a, that was really done masterfully to me. Cause I was like, yeah, Shuri is now living what her mom would feel. Even the most. more when Queen Ramonda said to her before Namor mm -hmm. appeared, uh, I have to tell you something about your brother. Oh, Bam, yeah. Namor. Yeah. So yeah. then when you see the end, you're like, oh. oh that's yeah. what she was going to say because yeah. she asked a great question. She said, Does, did my mother know? And mm -hmm. she's like, yes, your yeah. mother knew. Yeah. Did, did y'all really it was expecting Killmonger to come back? Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, really, I really wanted it. I really wanted so, him to come back. That's and, what like, he in real life. Oh. I mean, I was fine. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I was kind of bummed that he did like they made it yeah, official when he died. I was kind of. Give us that, man. Let, let me have us redemption of like, hey, I'm back. I'm going to be the new Black Panther. But here, here's the thing that I will say, like how we talked about outside of the movies, though, this now gives the perfect setup to my other theory that Battle World is going to have something to take place with in the astral plane, oh. because I think that they're going to have to go through there. And like you said, since we don't have Chadwick, I don't know. I don't think the father, the dude that played the father is still acting, I think, because of health as well. You need a representation there for whatever's going to be needed for them to be guided through there. And stuff. And so now that we know there's two people there, Michael B. Jordan, again, he might get his chance to don a Black Panther suit just because of where this battle might take. But it was good to see that, yo, y'all do have a representation there in that after realm for Wakanda. I don't think it'll go ancestral plane because then you got too many questions about where Chadwick is, right? Or T'Challa, that character of T'Challa. Um, because of that, it's similar to them not doing the Iron Man thing. Like we're like, yo, we can have them in a voice. No, then like it's like things like that that are gonna draw up too much. Like you got to think this movie was set to pay homage to Chadwick and honor his legacy and to move the story forward. So if you do yeah. the ancestral plane and show Killmonger and the mother and a recast the father, if you don't recast T'Challa, it's like what was this all for? Well, no, they don't have to. So they don't have to recast the father or the child. Because remember in the first one, when he first appeared in there, they were all Panthers. And ah. then he turned into his father. So if you wanted to, you could show a Panther that you can say as a reputation to him, or you could just show them all in that tree right there. But, but again, too, like the ancestral plane is also showing those of who pop up to you that, re that are representing you at the time. So those are the ones that choose to present themselves to you, which I would think her mother would present herself to her. She didn't give a damn about her father. If you go back to part one. <laughs> <laughs> part one. She, she ain't never mentioned this dude except never. for that the great western and sneakers. That was Man. it. She that had a it. smile on when Chad we came into the uh into the yeah. office the first time. And I'm like, you know y'all doubted just that. She was like, hello brother, look up what that boy is going. I'm like, <laughs> they were doing the handshakes and they were like, hey, right. Man. Like, look what that meant for you. I'm, I'm looking it up. The dude's still alive. It'd been dope to see the mom and the dad together, right? 
Yeah, but I think he may have some health issues. Oh. I think that's why. Because yeah. like, if you notice when he uh when he went uh ap- not after after the Civil War in actual Wakanda, like you can kind of see. I think he may have a stroke or something. Oh, like yeah. that. okay. But you can kind of see like see it. If they go comic book route, one way that they can bring back Killmonger, and I and I, I more so agree with CT about how it would just take it, it's too much. But if they did want to bring him out, uh, one of Black Panther's uh, powers that he has is he can resurrect the dead, right? And I know they already played around with it a little bit, but with Shuri being like the technological science person, and now she's had like she have a little bit of renewed faith in the Wakanda lore and everything that goes with it, like. I mean, if they wanted to play around with that, they could give her that power to resurrect the deck and bring back Killmonger. But like I said, I'm more on CT side of it. Like I feel like that yeah, it would take too much from away. From it takes it. away. Like you yeah, never yeah. want to. You never want to. As a writer, you never want to write yourself into a corner, right? Mm-hmm. Because now, if you open that door that she could bring people back from the dead, the bigger comic book audiences, the first thing gonna think about is Iron Man. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right, cool. They brought hey. him back. All right, let's go Iron Man. It's like, hey, or you bring back. Uh, Killmonger now bring back T'Challa and bring back the mother and the father yeah. and all the black. But like it just it becomes too much. Hold up, hold up! I got you with the with the 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 recreated uh, heart shaped herb with its temporary. Like we we can we, we can do this, but it only is going to die off at a certain amount of time. And same we, answer. And we Still bring, same questions. We'll bring Killmonger yeah. back, but then he dies. Like we don't want that with T'Challa. But but again, what CT is saying is, if she has the power to bring people back, why would your first choice be Killmonger? Why not right. your mom or T'Challa? Like, why would yeah. you go kill him? Like, yo, we meet Black Widow. Yeah, like, yeah. I now was waiting we, for you to make sure. Now, now we've completely undermined Endgame <laughs> yeah. in Infinity War because we brought back half the Earth's population because she got the power to bring people back from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, all right, that movie didn't need to happen then because we got this Black Panther. <laughs> Right, and then you got what's up face Okoye saying it again. What was she this whole time? And yeah. she forgot her name. Hey, everybody's reaction in this movie was the most black reaction. Yeah. Because when yes, because like, when they when, when the dude was like, "Wait, you want to go now?" Like, like he was like, "Wait, hold on, right now?" Like, hold on, like, like, and then like I said, when she was like, "Everything that I believed in is now like it's like everybody yeah. had true natural black reactions." To everything, like dog, like this is that had me in tears the whole movie. You know, what, like, you know what problem I had with the movie though? I just thought about is the third act when they had just flooded Wakanda, and then Namor was like, "I'm giving y'all a week." Woo! Right? And I was like, "I'm gonna do this again." He gave him like a month and a half because they had they had a time to build Riri's outfit, uh, the Ark. Of no the army, every yeah, they had everything. Right? I was like, there ain't no way y'all built all that. Movie. <laughs> there ain't no way in hell. I was like, you, why aren't you watching them? You should have had spies. Like, okay, they building some shit. They 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 are they they're about to attack us. Yeah, that they, that trope right there of I'll give you a week is always interesting because here's my biggest problem. Are you ready for this? Go for it. Who the fuck taught Shuri how to fight? <laughs> Let's go back. Now, Shuri, if she knew how to fight, she wouldn't have been taken. She wouldn't have needed this bodyguard. Well, I'll take that back because they even guarded uh, T'Challa. But my point is, she was literally helpless. Like, people were coming up to her and she was like, "Ah," like, you don't know what to do. So that's not the mark of a fighter. And then she just becomes the Black Panther and just knows how to fight. They didn't show a training montage. They didn't show her fighting with any of the Dora Milaje. That part didn't make sense to me. Look, look, you, you, we can even... Say let's 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 bypass the fight. Who taught you to cut these backflips off of boats like that and just claw- <laughs> you you just been claw practicing? Claw you just was claw too. ready. You just knew how to just slide on chin. <laughs> you just knew how to do all that already. Right. Hour two, not even hour like week two. two. Hour two, she hour out two. here. She was out here ready. Like I'm like. What? Okay. Now, this is something that Will and Dion said in the movie theater that this movie would have been incredible yes. as a Disney Plus series. Yes. Because I forgot it was about oh, Black Panther. Fine. Yeah. Is, oh, Black Panther. What kind of ever? I mean, what kind of Black like, Panther? I was like, yeah. man, I forgot this was about Black Panther. Yeah. When they when they brought back the heart shaped herb thing and it got to 100%, I was like, Oh, I forgot that that, that this was all oh, that this this was about. I forgot that suit got to come up. Yeah, we got. I was like, stretch this mug out ten episodes. We could have fell in love with yeah. Namor and 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 the world, both worlds. Riri, 
It'll be, it'll yeah. be a nice little tribute. But I will say, I think because they did say that they were going to make a Wakanda series, and I think it yeah. might focus on like the Dora Milaje and more like the politics of it happening. And so if that is the case, Wakanda Forever was a great setup for us to do that. Because like I said, I don't think we need a third movie right now. The only way I now see a movie happening for Wakanda is a few years in past uh, T'Challa's son has to come back and ascend the throne. Mm -hmm. And then this could be that T'Challa that we like that went to America that, you know, ain't a part of Wakanda, that version of Black Panther that has like the American accent and then goes back home to find mm -hmm. out like, yo, he has to ascend as king and he has that right because he got to challenge whoever the king is, which most likely will be in Baku. Well, what they did with the ending of that movie I thought was dope was that they really bought themselves some time, right? Because what they did was they they reset the hype for who's going to be Black Panther, right? For the longest, it was just recast, recast, recast. So then they gave us this kid who we know is not going to eventually be the next Black... Is, is, the kid is not going to be the next Black Panther, but it gives us a good six, seven, eight more years to say, okay, we're going to get some time away from that the t'challa that we've known and love but we're going to get a new t'challa which is t'challa's son and now we're going to that now throughout every young black actor is going to be like oh that may be a good person like it's now back to recreating that hype of oh we make it like who's going to be the next the, the next grown t'challa and yes and, yes and no yes and no because as i told dion now what that opened up was you have now different t'challa variants oh yeah yeah, so yeah definitely. now they still can go on this whole we're going to take it to uh, recast T'Challa, like we can see a new T'Challa in the next whatever big film, like Quantum Mania can show us a new T'Challa in Kang's universe that he comes mm -hmm. from, and they casted him as that. So they yeah. did open it up to where we can now be comfortable with seeing that, and to where we don't have to take over Chadwick's legacy. What well, and I, like the, the love part, interest of Storm. Well, that's what I was going to say. That that was going to be my next point. What they're going to do, and this I think this kind of solidified, we're going to get younger X Men. Because oh, yeah. that T'Challa is that T'Challa is going to be the T'Challa that marries Storm. I, I guarantee, I guarantee you it. And it's going to be a younger Storm. They're going, we're going to see younger X Men, not the not the already established. I think when they start introducing X Men in the MCU, this is going to be how to tie in a younger version of it. Here's the thing. This is what another thing that happened with that video. Quantum Mania. Oh, I hate to do this because we did this with Doctor Strange, uh, Multiverse of Midness. Yeah. We said we hope that they were going to do X, Y, and Z and introduce this person and that person and show this actor and show that actor. And from what we've seen, we've got our hopes up a lot of times. And Kevin Feige has met our hopes a lot of times, but a lot of times he hasn't. So my 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 fear is what Deuce has said, is that we're going to have really young X-Men. And by the time we get to Quantum Mania, that something happens with the time that speeds things up but also keeps oh. them in present day to where then we'll have adult or older versions of these characters to where now it makes sense for us to have these adult x-men but or have the x-men kind of like okay just to give this reference and i hate to do this every podcast i ever do but there was an episode of power rangers where they lost their powers they were filming the movie <laughs> hilarious the guy and they were aged down right they were kids and mm -hmm. then they got aged up and now here we are so i feel like it's a possibility for them to age up everybody and keep them in present day though like oh my goodness look look how you've grown type thing even if it's just that solid to show professor x and magneto and everybody to get the story together because i really don't know how they would introduce the x-men having been here the entire time without helping Thanos, I mean, without helping with Thanos and how they would do it to where they're just here. So many X-Men, there are so many mutants. Right. That, uh, well, one, um, CT don't ever stop doing Power Ranger references. Ever. Thank you, brother. You always yeah, keep right. doing those. God bless. Um, this is why I still, it still goes back to me saying X-Men are going to have to be introduced in another Earth. Like, and create. And yeah, 838 has got to be where these X-Men been at and stuff like that. And, like, that's where that happened. And the reason why, too, like, even going back to, like, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Midness, talking about Rachel's character and how she's this whole expert on this stuff. It's like, 
So that does, so it means to me that there are other people in universes that are doing this, even like the TVA. I feel like the TVA knows what mutants are. Mm. And so there has to be a universe where mutants already <laughs> exist. And that's going to have to be the incursion of where that happens. Once we start breaking and messing up fabrics of time now, it's like that's what's going to be the cross stream. And mm. but like how you just said, CT, to your point, that may be what combines us to get the story we're looking for. So we could have an older Charles and Magneto slip into our 616 and then he puts together that first class of mutants and starts being able to figure out what's going on and stuff with them. And then plus whoever else landed in there that's from their side, like the Juggernaut can fall in there, Apocalypse, whatever. But again, happening because of this encouragement, because like you said, it doesn't, they've now made it more and more unlikely that there's a Charles Xavier and a, a Magneto around that mm -hmm. knows these mutants that's been doing keeping these mutants and there's no point of who's been keeping this solid yeah. but that's the thing they introduced in dr strange because i keep giving i keep taking away credit uh by saying uh miss marvel and now namor they introduced mutants and fantastic four in dr strange by the illuminati by different planets mm -hmm. uh, not different planets different universes the universe. so if that's the case mutants already exist in those universes so the only way to get them to exist in our universe is a time jump and or like you said an incursion to where somehow their universes implode onto ours mm -hmm. just like the, that was one of the most brilliant things the cw dc verse ever did was implode all of their universes into one earth so where now every earth had uh the superman and the supergirl and all these superheroes and villains the problem with that becomes the variance mm -hmm. so urgh, it's like kevin feige is brilliant i just hope to see it done properly with these mutants and he's he's given us no reason to think that it wouldn't be so far yeah see the yeah. thing is it, it can happen with the universes with 616 and the 818 they want 818 happen but they all have an origin story Mm -hmm. You can't just skip past the fact that, you know, Apocalypse has been here, the childhood of, of, of Magneto. Like, you mm -hmm. can't skip past it. We, we can definitely get them to the earth. But the problem is, is like, we want to hear more about your life, how you guys are raised, how, why, why, you know, Jubilee's teenage years, you know, how Rogue got her powers. You, but you know what, too? Hear me out. There we go. It's going to be a sound <laughs> on <of> Instagram. <laughs> I think they go give us that with X-Men 97. I think X-Men 97 is that story, and it's going to show us how we are going to get X-Men in the MCU. Because now that I've seen them combining Spider-Man with, dang it, I can't say it because CT. Uh, but with them confirming their next uh, Spider-Man joint, that also confirms to me that cartoons can have relevancy in these in this mcu what if yeah so i would think man the thing is too they said they were bringing it back but they didn't say for how long and they say they were picking up after a certain point the end of that first one so it's like maybe this is telling us a story of one of those universes that have these x-men now quick question x-men 97 because i didn't really look deep into it is it is it called x-men 97 because the the setting mm -hmm. is going to be placed in 1997 i think that that was, that, the last that was the last episode, right? Yeah, in 97. Okay, I was just wondering because I was saying because like then that that predates like or is that to be around Captain Marvel time? So that like I'm just wondering how it falls oh. place in the MCU. That's why I was that's why I was asking. Yeah, yeah Captain Marvel was what year? It was, that was late 90. 90 late that was like 93, 91, right? 91, yeah, or early yeah 91. 91. I think 91. Okay, 91, so if 91. it was 91 when she left the planet, then that would make sense for the X Men not to even know about her. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait. No. 95. Captain Marvel. No, no, no. Not, not only that. Well, no, that she would have had to have come back, but then no, that don't make sense because Rogue, depending on what Rogue it is, because Rogue is the factor in that. Because Rogue gets her powers from Miss Marvel. She almost yeah. killed Miss Marvel, and that's how she got her powers. And the really? Marvel's doing up. Yeah. Yeah, the the com in the comic book, she touches Miss Marvel, damn near kills her. That's how we get the flight. Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel? I think it's Cap no Captain Marvel. 
Captain okay. Marvel is who she do because Car Carol does not like Rogue. Like when she be seeing Rogue, it be almost on sight. She almost killed. Really? Her. Yeah, like she. I didn't was, know that either. She was two minutes cartoon, from death. That's, that's yeah. the only reason I know about Miss Marvel. I mean Captain Marvel. Yeah, it's because I remember Rogue sucked the hell out of her and then Pauls um, <laughs> and, and and sucked all her powers out. And How did she do it? Like what what conflict did they have? Um, she was she needed help, and so um, nice. normally what they did was they'll let Rogue touch somebody to give her powers for a second. So like she let go. Yeah, she didn't let go. So like if uh, Cyclops was down, she would touch him real quick to get his laser eyes to shoot somebody to where it wouldn't affect him. But with Captain Marvel, she did not let her go, right. and she held mm -hmm. on to her till she was like an inch of her life and took all of her power. And like parasite. Did. Yeah. yeah. No, I know why Rogue does things. I just didn't know why uh, her. I didn't know what conflict she had with Captain Marvel in the first place for that to happen. So, so then, like I said, with Captain me. Marvel taking place in 95 and then this if this if this X-Men series is supposed to be connected and be in X-Men 97, it could have some connection. But here's the thing. Rogue. So correct me if I'm wrong. By what you're saying, Rogue only has powers because of Captain Marvel. So I know that when Rogue touches anybody, she can assume their abilities. Yeah. But does she have any without, like, does she have a base of any yeah, powers? The, the, powers. The, the, the base is the, su yeah, her base was the sucking of the powers. When she took Captain Marvel's powers, uh, flight and super strength stayed with her. Got it. That's the ones that stuck around with her. So like now, like how you said, if she touched someone, yeah. she'll gain them for a moment. But the ones she stick with is those abilities and super strength. I remember in the cartoon, it was like, let go, Rogue. She's like, I can't. Yeah, she was under some I control or some stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. You're killing her. Yeah, because they were friends. They were cool with each other. Yeah. I'm about to start watching X Men on Disney Plus. Yeah, so, like <laughs> yeah, here's the thing that makes sense because when I watched all the X Men movies from 2000 forward, Rogue couldn't fly. Yeah, right. which is Anna Packett, Peck, Peck mm -hmm. Yeah, she couldn't That's fly, and thing. she didn't have the super strength. All she could do is the hand thing, and it might have had something to do with the fact that uh, that Fox didn't own the copyright of. Uh, Captain Marvel, which is her origin story, pretty much for what y'all are saying. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's when, when she's especially when she's in the X Men, and so yeah, so it's like that also can tie in too and stuff. But then again, it's like how you said though, if they come back young, that's another way that how uh, if they don't use that story just yet with grown folks and they come in with new, that's still on the table. Because then that's how you can exit out Captain Marvel to where Miss Marvel takes over, and then um, uh, Rambo's character can take over because Rogue basically sucks the life out of Captain Marvel and takes her powers. Mm. Oh, so, so I, I I read it up real quick. Uh, it was um, Mystique. She, Mystique was the one that was controlling her during that time when she was uh, and when she was uh, trying to take uh, Captain Marvel's powers. Gotcha. How does she have? She has mind control. Mystique. I, I didn't. They, mother, they, they right? didn't get it. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it was some amulet. I think she had. Yeah. Too. It was uh, yeah, like a little brooch that she had. Yeah, she was. Yeah, because yeah, Mystique is her mom. Um, and then I think also she's night. Wait, mom. Mystique is Rogue's mother. She yeah. grew up with her. She raised her. Okay, raised mother is different though. Yeah, so I, not, 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 no, no, because they always like like we like I, I I'm not gonna confirm it on here because I'm not too sure. But okay, supposedly Mystique is Rogue and Nightcrawler's mother. But and they so, never make. Do they make mention in the cartoon that Rogue and Nightcrawler are brother and sister? No, no, they don't. And that's the thing Nightcrawler too. is blue, so that's definitely her yeah. son. But yeah. Rogue is not her birth daughter. No, I think she either portrayed somebody else and raised her basically, and Look raised her. Those. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm right. I and think so, though. I think that is actually might be her blood daughter, but I know they have mentioned that being her child. Yeah. So they said that from what I'm reading, they said. In the comics, it was originally going to be revealed that Mystique, um, that Rogue was Mystique's actual daughter. But for whatever reason, that run didn't complete or they never got to it. And they, so the reveal never happened. But everything was leading up to it of, of, of the reveal. They just never revealed it. But they did reveal it in, in, another, in a cartoon series called X-Men Evolution. So the one that actually oh, okay. had yeah, Storm's this, this kid. Yeah, the one that had Storm's kid, the one that could shoot the stuff out of his arms, they had they did actually do a story where both of them were Mystique's children. Hmm. It's too um, many, it's too many relatives in X-Men, man. Like Charles Xavier and Juggernaut are like half brothers. 
<laughs> it's like I hate these stories, yeah. man. Like how y'all going? It's but, very but Rose, so Rose, Yeah, but Rose makes sense though because hers is a manipulating gene, so it's kind of almost technically the same as Mystique's. Mystique has to have physical contact with you to turn into you. It's, it's the same power. concept. She just does it with powers instead of actual physical appearance. Yeah, that's a terrible power, by the way. That you, you're a rogue. You be like. You try to run up to the person get the <laughs> Yo. <laughs> and then the fact that the original Fox movies showed the worst way to have that power is when you fucking somebody and it's just hey, like. Hey, that. <laughs> I was, Fox was old one with that one. Like, yeah. Why reveal it during this moment? Out of all the moments you could have revealed it. <laughs> I was like, yo, that chick ain't going to never be I right no more. You're going to go there. <laughs> Out of all characters, I was like, let's, let's, let's focus on Rogue as the main character. That's a terrible power to have. <laughs> Opener. <laughs> Team fucking and then go to a great expense. Show credits, like, X-Men. Movie. It works in every horror movie. Let's do it in the X-Men movie. Let's just do it here. Oh, let's so start off off the game. Even in the cartoon, Jubilee's powers was trash. He had firework powers. <laughs> every day is the 4th of July, fucker, with her. Yo, and they didn't even give her a good name. Like, they could have said, yo, like, pyrokinetics, and then it was like, nah, I shoot fireworks. Like, <laughs> and I was just like, there's something low-key racist about this. This, this is, is a distraction. Because did y'all know she was Asian? Yeah. In the cartoon? I didn't know that. I thought that was a white girl dressed like no. cyberpunk. Yeah. And then they was like, no, that's an Asian. And I was like, yeah. something seems racist about this. Yeah. It's very, her powers are very just annoying. Like, they're very... <laughs> <laughs> Jubilee's powers are a distraction. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. Uh, that's and then you go back to the other stuff. <laughs> Jubilee, hit her with your claws. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's a jubilation. It's a jubilation. It's a jubilation. <laughs> it's a jubilation. <laughs> Look, give us fireworks set 17, and that's going to be a diversion for us oh, to get out. <laughs> you, hear, you hear like Gambit, like, who do you got to be on the team? We got jubilation, and we got Rogue. Fuck. The two people are the most The two people, right we can't do anything. Uh, here's the thing, though. So, Black Panther, phenomenal. I love the fact that he has a son with the exact same name to continue the legacy. That that stayed true to what Kevin Feige said, mm -hmm. that T'Challa won't be recast in the 616 universe. And that's really? not a recast. That mm -hmm. is a son. And bam, he's going to be the Panther. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to definitely move time around. I don't know how in Quantum Mania because I only watched 20 seconds of that trailer and I had to close my ears and close my eyes because I'm like, all right, I get the plot of the movie. I don't want to <laughs> see too much because I'm going to remember it. Um Looking I, at it, go ahead. I can't. I no, 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 no. Matter of fact, no. You finish first. My fault. No, because so, it's time. What you're saying. So seeing it, it's like Black Panther set up so much and gave us so much. It's like they're really putting a lot of a lot of energy into Young Avengers and Thunderbolts, bro. Yes, a lot, a lot. That and, and you know what? Up until this movie, I really didn't really have much care for the Thunderbolts. Like I knew they was coming and I wasn't, but the, now knowing like, oh, it's like like you said, we can't trust no white folks. Like I'm like, oh, they about to really get the fucking with the fucking with Wakanda, fucking with Namor and his people. I'm like, all right, I see where the Thunderbolts are going now. And now I'm I'm heavily interested in the Thunderbolts. It's very because it's very uh, Amanda Waller Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as them having Julia Louis Louis Dreyfus against a Viola Davis and a Suicide Squad. This is a much more kid-friendly mm -hmm. Suicide Squad. And unfortunately, none of these characters am I in love with. Like, that aspect feels, I mean, outside of General Ross, that story feels very um, TV movie-ish. Oh, yeah. Is it, is it yeah. a movie or a TV show? It's a movie. Oh boy! Yeah, but it does give off very like a team type of vibes. Yeah. Like it does. Give the good thing is we already know their origin story, so it, it doesn't. It doesn't really. We gotta know all that. We can get right yeah. to it. DC Legends of Tomorrow is what I was gonna say. It feels very. That is oh, way better. Yeah. Way better. Yeah, way better. See, you know, but yeah. that gives room though to do something Suicide Squad didn't do and make a big shakeup in the MCU because you wouldn't see that coming. And so I think that's something that can really be taken away from there. And then one thing I, I, also, I also thought about after seeing Quantumania, this may be the first time where we're going to see our characters in different times. Like even in watching Quantumania, I don't think Ant-Man's going to come back to 2025 <laughs> our time. 
I think he's going to why because again, like they keep talking about these branches, these things separating. It's too much of you calling it the multiverse saga, which makes me think that they're not going to. And then too, like your, your favorite movie, No Way Home. There might be something to that. I think we're finna see different planes of these places throughout I, these this I mean, next mad line. disrespectful to, to recast all these people that's still on earth. What you know? no, you don't have to because remember, time ain't linear. Yeah. So while we're, what's happening and like what we think might be Ant Man's 2047, our 2025 is happening at the same time. Because remember, when Doctor Strange went to 838, they were advanced in years already. Like their war been happened. That stuff been done. Like they got a whole new utopia. So they way past our time. So, so they can they Doctor Strange is twenty twenty eight universes as well, huh? Can Quantum Manium switch universes as well? Well, remember they have those those time vortexes, and so that's the thing too. Like like she said, don't get lost in the time vortex because we may not be able to bring you back. And I think that's what's going to involve the TVA. I think that's what's going to involve mm -hmm. us coming across with Loki and where Kang's real plan is because of the fact that this is going to take place everywhere yeah. you know this is now they, happening at the same time you know how they did a uh, civil war not civil war uh winter soldier uh captain america winter soldier when they had that really quick uh villain in the beginning it'd be a nice yeah. little it'd be a nice little tribute if they had yellow jacket just really quick in there just to kill him off real quick Man, they let me tell you something. Marvel oh. has shown that they don't care about no villains that didn't pop. <laughs> and also, every Marvel villain is apparently a good guy because they all get their origin story and they make you care about them. Mm -hmm. And every villain becomes one of those people that you don't really care to see fight. That's why Loki was so... That's why they booked Loki in everything because mm -hmm. he was the one true complicated character that was a villain that then turned over a new leaf. But he yeah. had done so much damage already that, you know, you got to still label him as a villain until the TVA. Yeah. But also, too, I think we may see Yellow Jacket again. Because he goes in there. He, he got sent to the... I think he's MODOK. I think oh, that's what... Ha I think yeah. he's MODOK now. Because like they said, like, I think he when he went to that realm, he got mutated and stuff like that. And you saw when he was, like, shrinking and stuff like oh, this again. Wow. We saw that here in this side. So when you go into the quantum realm, what does he look like there? Ooh, and then again, too. With Tell Kane. me a little bit more, Doc. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about that. <laughs> with the, and then, like, Kang's technology is down there. His mind, Kang's mind. I would not be surprised if Modoc is one of the people helping him or... That part I saw when you remember, in, ah, you don't watch. The, well, you saw this part in the trailer when you saw that shooting star come across and that person that was sitting there watching it come down. Everybody keeps thinking that's Kane. That might be Modoc. Mm. I mean, Yellow Jacket when he first got there. Mm. Oh, did y'all hear about the vi the vibranium theory about how important it is to everything moving forward? Yeah. So yeah, that theory. So because they were saying it was like you know. The celestials when they send their seed and everything like that there was like they they send this seed to everywhere and by for vibranium to be such an like uh an important metal and the celestials potentially are made from vibranium there was like the world earth should not have discovered vibranium because if they're sending these seeds everywhere and why hasn't other any other planet or universe discovered vibranium? Why was it only Wakanda and Namor and his people, right? And so the theory is, is that that first universal war was whatever the ships were made of, whatever it was, whatever destruction had. The reason why there was so many um, meteors that's falling on Earth and just and and it's shooting out is the way it was. Is that these are vibranium ships vibranium because of uh, because of the technology, because of the way that it's built, because of the way that it looks. And so they're saying that King. Kang, he was the he survived the last universal war war and when he wasn't supposed to, and the machine that he's building or the tech that he's looking for, it may be because of he's trying to build everything out of vibranium and everything like that. Yeah, I can see that, but nothing too. I, I, yeah, I, like <laughs> and I, I was like, I agree with you, uh, but I, I I can also see that being tied back into when he was like a pharaoh. Uh, I forget. I can't. I can't remember the full name of it right now. But it was like when he was a pharaoh king, and that could have been at the time when one of those wars happened. And it's happening with them ships. Mm -hmm. And like you say, it crashed there because, like they said, 
everything is being set up by this guy. So there's yeah. no piece that was put here that he didn't think of. And that's why it's like the most thing that y'all will be able to beat him is by him defeating himself. But I do think what's going to come into play with Vibranium even more too is from us as a people using it. Because like you just said, we're not supposed to use that. So I think Vibranium may also be tied into how Dr. Doom gets his disease and starts turning metal. Mm. By mm. mess because remember they're hey. using nanites too, so it's like yo trying to use beast. that technology and not using it right. Then you had these other because again too you had these other pieces of tech like you had the Chitari tech. You even still have other things that were made from the Mind Stone from the you know yeah. the Tesseract, the stuff that they that we didn't see uh that was used. So it's like yo we don't know what technology Doctor Doom has his hands on or what they're looking to build because that's what makes me feel like it has to be doom being tied in with reed and that machine i feel like re remade that machine reed thought this was great for like research and stuff right like that on the project that doom got them working on and what they didn't know was doom is basically trying to find this stuff to be able to create weapons mm. yeah whoever whoever was selling it that's that whoever that person is is going to be major that's why i'm i'm assuming it's doom like because it was like yeah so whoever was doing that like you they already built up the lore of this person like okay this person or uh, one the fact that you know that there's other um vibranium out there and that you're actively searching it and that you found it in the water is like yo who is this person that has this vast of knowledge to know where to search how to search what to look for and everything like whoever that person is is going to be a big problem in the mcu yeah man this has been a fire ass episode this ass, this ass, this ass. Man, ass. y'all blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but before we close out, I, I do have a segment in, like, I want to always name, like, especially when we talk about movies um, like these, I want to always get y'all opinion on at least three standout things. So one, in Wakanda Forever, the MVP, who would y'all consider to be the MVP of Wakanda Forever? Angel Bassett. She got to get all the rewards from me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 months, man. I was like, man, as far I'm, I'm yeah, so as cool. far as most moving performance, yeah, I, I'm with that. Angela Bassett is MVP for me because that, she set man. the tone from the beginning to to her uh, her untimely demise. Like she really right. set the tone of what this whole movie and everything was going to be. So yeah, I, I give her the MVP. I felt so when she said when she said no, she needs to stay here. She needs to kind of like figure things out. No, let her come on with me. We need to get her out the out the Wakanda. We have mm-hmm. a little vacation. I want to figure this out. And then she like you, you, you still lost my daughter. <laughs> yeah, like dude, man. I was like, man, I can imagine how she feels right now. Yeah. Man. MVP is definitely Angela Bassett with an honorable mention to Denia Guerrero. Uh, I mean, how do I say it? The um, Niagara. I'm, you, I'm, uh, I'm gonna Co- go with Koye. 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 I'm right. gonna go Koye because that's the one yeah. I know I know how to say. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah I'm, like, I'm gonna say you said it right. Honorable mention, but she was still acting off of Angela Bassett. Yeah, Angela mm-hmm. Bassett did set the tone. I agree with you there. Angela Bassett also let us know that she was not to be trifled with from the very mm-hmm. beginning. <laughs> and when she brought them soldiers in by giving a signal, like these are yours, mm-hmm. and they couldn't say <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? And like to where she was so powerful. I wanted to see her be Black Panther. We all yeah. know she's in shape enough to do it. But when you see Angela Bassett do this role and you see everything that she's done, they leaned on her a lot because we didn't get that from her the first movie. Mm-hmm. First movie, she was more so a smaller character. Yeah. And it's like she had to remind everybody, oh, yeah, just in case you didn't know, I'm Angela motherfucking Bassett. Yeah, yeah. no, th- yeah. exactly. She put her like this is one. this was one of those moments where it's like, when you see somebody that you know can act acting when they're in the movie, you're like, ah, like, okay, like, I we know the, the chat. Yeah. Like, this movie, she definitely said, oh, let me show y'all why I'm who I am yeah. and bring it to this Marvel movie for y'all. Like, yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. And you're right. Denai definitely had that glossy look in her eyes, like, like, but this is all I know. She's yeah. like, like, don't strip this from me. She's like, this I is my life. As Apparently, she's getting the Disney yeah. Plus series. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's what the Wakanda series is supposed to be yeah. focused on. Is because so her, 
So yeah. it's like when you look at Denai Guerrero, man, geez Louise. Mm -hmm. She's also Viola Davis's daughter. I need them to work together. <laughs> right. They something. look too much alike, bro. They do. Something, bro. I was surprised she wasn't at Woman King. Like, I was like, yeah. that's the only person missing in this. Man. Yeah. But when you look at for what y'all said about Woman King, these are two similar movies as far as how the Dora Milaje and the Woman King yep. uh, mm -hmm. army was. But, dude, the women in this movie killed it and you talking to somebody this is another thing i'll give them a, a a round of applause for this movie was not the typical trope of i'm tough because i'm a girl and that no. always turns audiences mm -hmm. off it's yeah. like just write a good story mm -hmm. get the actors to act it perfectly and it will come across as strong powerful and it'll connect that's why we like the movie salt with angelina jolie mm -hmm. uh atomic blonde with charlize their own there are yep. so many films where yep. you get a chance to see uh kill bill led yep. by uma thurman like these are mad characters yeah. say it again oh, mad max no, nah. what's the one you said? Uh, what? <laughs> a long kiss, good night. A long kiss, good night. Yeah, but she was she wasn't a star. Tom Tom Hardy was a star. Yeah. No, he was not. Yeah, he was. He's Mad Max. He was Mad yeah, Max. but it was he was kidnapped the entire movie. Uh, Charlie Theron was trying to save him. The whole yeah, but she, I don't she care was, if something wins an award or not. Just because it wins an award, don't make it good. You understand? But she was about to get her own movie, so that yeah. would like if she'd have got it, like how you say, then to your point, it would have been included in this. Yeah, yeah. but she wasn't but a star of it. This movie thrust women into such a powerful story mm -hmm. that not one time looking at that movie that I say, oh, here come the girls. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Because it was and, that powerful and well done. And to your point, CT, they did it right off the bat because that opening scene with um with Angela Bassett when she said, y'all think we weak, right? And she didn't say, y'all think we weak because we got a whole bunch of women. She was like, right. y'all just think we weak because the Black Panther is not here. But missed. no, we still got the Dora Milaje and they came through like I said, they it wasn't like I said it wasn't girl power. It was no. like nah, we just beat the fuck. You also, it goes to like. show how weak the men of Wakanda are because they got an all woman army <laughs> taking oh, care of everything, <laughs> and it shows like I. This is the last part about this. Shout out to uh, the women, not only because I know that there are several girls and boys that were watching this and saw themselves in some character in this mm -hmm. film, but also I love that they didn't do. A whole bunch of catchy theme phrases like oh you're strong yeah because women are strong it's like thank god yeah, yeah, that yeah. none of that happened during the movie yeah, yeah. and yeah. it showed that a man can write for strong women mm -hmm. as opposed to it having to be the uh, the age old thing saying oh it's always men talking about women don't know man don't know woman well apparently this man knew exactly <laughs> yeah. how to write these women yeah it wasn't no cliche like how you said like do said you didn't have that point where like how they had an end game and stuff like that it was like I'll take it from here and all the women were, yeah we got yeah. her back it's like yeah that was yeah I didn't need that yeah. they're like what like this war somebody had shot y'all right now doing <laughs> yeah. all that the fuck y'all doing. Then I, I like one ear, the girl, the girl from Guardians to cut you off, the one with the antlers that does the emotions. Why was <laughs> she in the front of the group? Who are you? You ain't got time to touch nobody. <laughs> and the and the she was standing there, just <laughs> wait, why am I here? Wait a minute, just walking <laughs> like you about to kill some shit. I lost my group, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 lost my group. <laughs> I lost my group. <laughs> That's what she looked like, but it was like these moments you saw it as human beings being human beings yep. like when you saw the door melage come in you didn't think just women you it wasn't the first thing of like these women it's like oh shit they finna fuck y'all up bro that's all you thought of oh shit you look at them at the same level as the jabari tribe like when you see like the tribes in it you just like all right jabari tribe they beastie they just like savages but the uh the door melage they like the they the skillful tactician group like you don't you're not equating them to men and women you're just looking at it like a tribe this is the it's like the navy the army the the air force like you're just looking at it as factions and that's how that's why Bro, it's done so well if Mbaku, if Mbaku gets that heart shape or herb, it's a wrap. It's like, he was strong without it. So yeah. if he get that shit, bro, he throwing so, it across the room. So I got a question though, and I just like I don't because I don't know if this would be shown or if this would happen. But so Mbaku is technically the great ape, and the way he's drawn in the comics, white ape is is a white ape. It's this big ass white ape. So it's just like if he had the heart shape herb, would you start to see that stuff come out? 
start to see what stuff come out. Like, would you you start, eight? Ooh, you're becoming an eight. So let me ask y'all this. As I asked that question and all three of y'all talk, do you think I heard any of that shit? <laughs> I was like, do you think he might start developing the characteristics of an ape? Oh, even more than the grunting and all of yeah. that he's already doing? Yeah, because yeah, that's what made me think, like, yo, like, he is technically the great ape, and it's just like, ah, that's ah. Richard. Yeah, so it's like, would he start getting bigger? Would he start getting a little bit more because of him eating it? Like, would he be the size of the Hulk now after eating that? These are great questions. Yeah, I, I just want to see how he's going to move as the king of Wakanda. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah. they you know what they're gonna do, I promise you. What they do a Dorja Dorja Malage? Was it Malage? Dora Malage. Dora Malage. You made me forget it. Dora uh shit. <laughs> I thought Dora it was Dora Malage. Malage. Yeah. <laughs> if they do that, they're gonna have if they do a series, it's gonna be a guy who's gonna try to be a part of the group. Like, hey, why can I be a part of it? <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna do something like that. Watch, they'll be like, hey man, this is a girls' group. And they'll be like, hey, they need weird. No, men need representation to be a part of group, girls' groups. They're gonna, they're gonna do something like that. I can't. Here's one other hole I that I I'll that I realized upset. watching a the movie. They kept calling Shuri princess even after Angela Bassett's character died. Yeah. And I'm like, uh uh uh, she's the queen now. Don't, so here, so he, I had a conversation about that with my brother about this. So I think that has something to do with age. I think she can't ascend to the throne until she is of age. How and old is why she? I don't think she. I don't think. I don't think she's old enough to become queen yet. And so, and that, and that's the thing too. I think like you have to go through a certain, a uh, certain everything for that to happen. Mm. Because and then too, also what made me think of that is I don't think she has full ascension to the throne because the rightful heir to the throne is to chop. It only went back to the queen because T'Challa died. Mm -hmm. well, so, so now Mbaku's a king right now, right? Yeah, yeah but and, and that's why he had to go challenge for it. So they made him temporary king because they were in his domain. Well, he about to and fight so, Shuri for the uh, throne. See, so well, no, we don't know who he had to fight. Because remember, right. at the end, he got out. He Easy said, word. I'm challenging for the throne. So you know, nobody may have challenged him. <laughs> so I had a different oh, interpretation of it. So <laughs> the way I thought about it was, you know, even uh, in Black Panther, but T'Challa wasn't the king until his dad died. So T'Challa was just a protector of Wakanda. So I assumed that Shuri was following his footsteps and I just want to be the protector. I don't want to be, do, be the king. And him saying I challenge was more so saying, look, I'm king unless somebody challenged me. I'm challenging. And if somebody was to step up, they would go. But if nobody steps up, he's king. So that's how, that was my interpretation of that moment. Yeah, but I think also, too, that goes back to now it makes me even now more think that M'Baku turning into more of an ape can happen because like how you said, Shuri could have the power to bring people back from the dead. So I think this heart-shaped herb does give each person a different type of power when they get it. And then, if, and then at one point, I think T'Challa's family is the one that started fusing protector and king together. I think his father and then his father before him started becoming both protector and king because there is one version where of a black panther. I don't know. I think it's his dad. His I think uh, T'Challa's dad can actually have the head of a panther at one point. Oh. Like there's yeah, there's one that like he'll actually have a human a panther head and will like bite puck people's heads off and stuff like that. Shit. So yeah, so I was <laughs> like, so I think it it does affect them all differently. So there's also that to be there but i think like the hierarchy for like that royal lineage and stuff like that like how that process goes i think that is something that we do need to see more thoroughly explained because like how you just said how you said ct it was awkward that they kept calling her princess yeah and the only thing i can think of is just like she has she isn't of age yet because even too even at that point like they had said like she had said he had said to her um I thought I was a child that that uh, scoffed at traditions and like how Mbaku told us, like after everything you've been through, you ain't no child. Yeah, you ain't no child no more. You been that is you. a good point. Yeah, yeah. But that makes me wondering too, like how old was she when Black Panther was out? Because if that's the case, if was she thirteen at that time? So if five years passed, that just makes her eighteen. True. So she still may not be a full age to be able to ascend to the throne yet. So as of last year, they said she was 31. And as far as 2021 in the cinematic universe, she was 31. So that means that so she will be 32 now. So at that time, when who was, was 32? Sure. 
Ain't no damn way she was 30 years old. I'm hey, just letting you, I'm just letting you know what they say. What they, I just looked it up. <laughs> then how old was the child? They going by real life ages. Wait, they got they gotta be real life. They gotta be how old she is. I take it back. That yeah, that 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 website. This is a better site. So during Black Panther, your credibility was sixteen. <laughs> That's too late, brother. You went too deep. <laughs> yeah, I like thirty one. Wait a minute, yeah, no I control. No, so they said that during Black Panther one, she was sixteen. So now she's on. She should be nineteen twenty. Okay, I can accept that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can definitely accept that. Um, so one more would be who, like, you know, we, we've talked about it now. So we, I was, the next one was going to be who was the six six man forward. But I think we had already kind of jumped on that with M'Baku, the Dora Milaje, and just the women on Wakanda were definitely there to continue to keep up with this uh, movie. And then, like yeah. I said, Angela Bassett being the MVP, I think she helped elevate all of them to be there. And then just, too, before we get out of here, just your favorite moment of the entire movie. Just your your favorite, just like that was it. Oh shit, she got the Aramis. That's that mine. Definitely. That's mine. Without yeah. question, bro. <laughs> uh, just to pick another one outside of that one, Mbaku, uh, Winston Duke's imp uh, improv improvised line because he that bald headed demon line, I cracked up so hard. And they said that that was not in the script. He improvised that. <laughs> Who did he call a bald headed demon? <laughs> he caught a Koye ball head dude. Because oh. they was arguing. <laughs> he said, You bald headed. For it, for uh, for this. And I thought, I said, no, That was hilarious. <laughs> That's the stuff I can't wait to see, though. Like the dialogue between Wakandans. We don't see, we haven't seen that yet. We have, we see like little glimpses of it. Like even when Shuri went to go uh, with a Koye to the uh, school. And even how they was talking about iPhones and stuff like that, like their dialogue is so interesting on how they act and stuff. And it's just like, yo, I can't wait to see more of that in a regular basis. Not just, you know, like we on high alert with the kingdom and stuff. Like I want to hear like y'all regular day-to-day -day conversations y'all have with each other. Very also, true. When she's talking about the makeup on her hair, it's like, is my makeup bad? Yeah, I told you it didn't match. <laughs> she like, you're fine. It's fine. That's that like, was great because it was a really callback really to the first movie. Hair. Yeah, she like the wig yes. the first time. So maybe exactly. <laughs> yeah, man. But yo, man, I think that was a great, great way to go ahead and end off this fantastic episode of Wakanda Forever uh, edition of Straight Out of a Comic Book, man. I want to thank my guests as always, Young Dude, CT, and Dion for coming through. And we want to know from y'all in the comments below, what was your favorite moment in Wakanda Forever? Who did you think was the MVP of this besides Angela Bassett? You know, you, you can still write Angela Bassett, but in case you had somebody else, <laughs> let us know in the comments below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, uh, share this video to my channel. And then, you know, to end this off, we're going to give a moment of silence and a Wakanda forever, man, to the late and great Chadwick Boseman. May you rest in peace, and thank you for giving us such an incredible role. And we will catch you next time. Ow! That's, that's, I'm sorry, moment of silence. <laughs> See ya, I'm <lacking>. See ya. <laughs>